Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com. I'm here today with a project update video for this 1.6 scale ArmorTech radio controlled late production Tiger 1. Since the last video update, progress has been made to the model's machinery as well as to the model's electronics. The tracks have also been fitted to the vehicle and the model is now fully functional. We'll be going over these features in this video. Starting with the motion pack, we'll start with the motors. ArmorTech uh, option pack supplies you with two very large, very heavy, and very robust electric geared motors. These motors here, as we can see the stats, are 24 volt powered and are very powerful and are more than adequate to propel the model. The motors themselves come pre-assembled with what you see here. You have the motor and you have the gearbox mechanism. The gearbox mechanism is all made out of CNC aluminum and it is all pre-assembled and ready to go out of the box. The motors come pre-packaged in this very nice bubble wrap and the motors arrive nice and securely and are very well packaged. The motors come as a left and a right hand unit and are simply installed to the motor mount via the supply bolt. As for wiring the motors, no solder is necessary in that all of the connectors are simple plug-in installation. We also have, if we notice, the negative portion of the motor marked with red. In addition to the motors, the option pack also contains a sealed bag that contains all of the wires, connectors, as well as all of the hardware needed to get the model up and running. Also included with the option packs, it's sealed in the bags, are the instruction manuals which are very easy to follow with a lot of CAD illustrations and with a lot of detailed instructions on the inside. Also included are is the main power switch and, and power module. This has the push button power switch on it as well as the speed controllers. These systems are a lot different than their earlier offerings in that these systems here are actually a lot simpler to put together and are mostly all plug and play. And here goes the motor just before installation. As we notice I added some quick smear grease to the smaller drive gear. As we recall the main final drives also are lubricated with the same grease. As for actually mounting the motor to the motor mount, the motor mount differs from the earlier version of the, of the Tiger that was released. In the past the motor mount was design differed slightly from this in that the screws would need to be affixed to the motor mount via nuts and bolts on the other end creating a flange. This system it differs in that instead of having the fasteners the aluminum bracket has is already tapped and threaded and the long mounting bolts simply thread right in. To mount on the motor I will be using the kit supplied fastener along with some thread lock as well as a lock washer positioned on the end just for extra strength. Other than that the motor mount installs to the bracket very easily with no troubles. And here go the motors affixed to the vehicle. As we notice that the all the bolts have been added and the motors have absolutely no play and are rock solid with the body. When it comes to this part of the build, this is one part where you want to have absolutely no play or any type of wiggle room on the component. It needs to be as tight as possible to the model's hull. Now keep in mind that the flange mechanism is made out of aluminum, so you don't want to over torque the bolts when you're installing the piece. You just want to tighten them until that they're nice and tight, however not over tight, which could cause damage to the flange. Because of the Tiger 1 having its torsion bars on the bottom of the hull, a subfloor pan is required in order to fit on all and to mount on all of the model's equipment, including the batteries as well as the electronics. To facilitate this, the ArmorTech kit comes with a floor pan. The pan itself is made out of sheet steel. It's very fit, it's a thick gauge, very strong, very sturdy, and comes with all of its holes pre-drilled into it. Because of the way I will be modifying the model, in which I will be adding some more details to the engine area, 
the floor pan needs to be modified. Rather than mounting it to the stock Armor Tech holes, I need to move the pan up more towards the front of the vehicle in order to mount on the electronics as well as the batteries. Because of this modification, I needed to modify the pan to better suit my needs. The pan itself, being a nice thick gauge steel, makes adding these modifications to it very simple. To start with, I am going to be modifying the pan to have the batteries mount in this portion here. Because of that, I will be affixing two aluminum angles to the pan, thus creating a closed-in box. The way the batteries are going to be affixed to the pan and to the vehicle is via small bungee straps. Once the bungee straps are on, the batteries are held in their space and are very sturdy and don't wobble around when the model is in motion. In order to affix the rails to the pan, I went ahead and drilled some more holes into the pan for that of affixing of the angles. In addition to the angles, I'm also going to be drilling some bigger holes here towards the sides of the pan in order for the clips of the bungee cords to strap on to the floor pan itself. And here goes the pan ready for installation. As you can see since the last scene, the pan itself received its coat of base coat of primer, as well as having its battery tray angle pieces of aluminum affixed to the pan with fasteners. All components that you see mounted on right now are on with fasteners and not adhesives. Also, if we notice, I went ahead and extended the front portion of the pan. The purpose of that is so that I can install and affix more components to this pan without having to mount them in other portions of the hull. Because of the engine compartment interior, the interior is not going to have as much space as I usually would in order to, fix, to affix all of the accessories and electronics needed for this model. So to extend the pan, I simply affixed two pieces of angle aluminum to the steel pan and I plated the plate with a panel of clear Lexan. The Lexan is an eighth of an inch thick and is the same thickness as the steel, making for a nice seamless transition from steel to plastic. For mounting on the model subfloor, the kit supplies you with several steel CNC'd razors. These razors that we see here are a little bit different than their previous versions in that they have a lower profile to them than their usual solid steel razor. The lower profile is, has a couple features. One, it saves a little bit of weight and two, with its lower profile, has the piece fit in a lot easier in between the torsion bars, thus reducing a risk of the piece making contact with the torsion bar and restraining it from actuating. And here goes the subfloor mounted to the model. All the fasteners that we see here come with the kit and are, and are supplied with the option pack. They include several large countersunk fasteners, as well as lock washers, the nuts, as well as regular washers to keep everything nice and together. During installation, I went ahead and added countersinks to the steel plate so that the bolts, once fitted, fit nice and securely to the plate as well as the vehicle, but also give a nice flush mounting surface for that of the batteries and other electronic equipment that need to be mounted to this plate. If the large uh, nuts are found in this location, it will make mounting on the electronics and other components a lot more difficult in that the floor won't be flush and the pieces will have to ride on top of an uneven surface. Adding the countersinks is a simple, uh, is a simple procedure done with a countersink bit on a drill press and once added, really help the installation of the plate. And here goes the subfloor mounted to the model. All the fasteners that we see here come with the kit and are, and are supplied with the option pack. They include several large countersunk fasteners, as well as lock washers, the nuts, as well as regular washers to keep everything nice and together. After the holes were drilled, all of the filings as well as drilled up material was vacuumed out of the body 
as once the equipment starts getting added, it will be difficult to clean the interior with all the machinery added. So after you drill your pilot holes, it is good to go ahead and vacuum up everything to keep your interior nice and tidy. Once the tray is mounted, it is then time to start installing some of the machinery. Now, as you can see, the machinery that's installed in the model now is really, really rough, and it's only put in place just for testing purposes only. After the model is tested, this machinery layout will be rearranged into a much more permanent and a, lot, and a much more cleaned up state. Within this jumble of wires that you see here right now, we have connected two of the tank's option packs. We have the main drive as well as the sound system. The model itself is powered by two 12 volt batteries which are hooked up in series circuit to give you 24 volts. The Armortech tanks are designed to power on 24 volt and the 24 volts do give you the ample amount of power needed to propel such a large and heavy model. The electronics on these newer generation Armortech tanks are different than that of the previous builds. If we recall the Panther build that I recently finished, that interior layout had a slightly different package when it came to how the electronics are, are plugged together. On the older kits, they required a little bit more following of a schematic. However, on their newer kits, everything is basically plug, plug and play, and you could get running within a very short period of time. This box over here, this box here is your main power supply. This is your on and off switch. This little red button here will turn the tank on. This box here, in this big jumble of wires, is actually your speed controller. This is what hooks up your two uh, main drive motors to the power supply and also to the radio. The box sitting next to it is your auxiliary power supply. What this power supply is for is to power your functions, namely the tart rotation as well as the gun elevation. Moving our way to the back, this here is the amplifier module. Built inside this box here is your Benedetti sound system, which a lot of smaller scale RC tank aficionados will say is probably one of the best sound systems available for radio control tank use. The system does have a volume control knob, which we have here, and you can control the volume of the tank from this position here. Towards the back we have the two speakers, which I mentioned earlier. Currently the model is hooked up to a Futaba six channel radio. This radio that we see here is just for testing purposes only and will not be the radio which is used on this model once after the testing is complete. After the model is road tested, more of the model's functions as well as option packs will be added to the interior and I'll have more on that layout as the build progresses. Moving on to the model's track, the model's track like I mentioned in the project start video are comprised out of individual links which are workable and they are made out of a cast aluminum alloy. Tracks themselves are very durable and are this material is used on all the armor tech tanks from Tigers to Panthers to King Tigers. The tracks come boxed and in the box are several bags that contain five links apiece. The bags are hermetically sealed and to assemble the tracks you need to open up the bags. In addition to the tracks we also have CNC steel pins. Pins are nice in that they're also very strong. They're chrome plated so they actually glide into the pre-drilled track links with ease. And one thing that's of note on these newer production Armor Tech tanks is that the pin, it's hard to get in frame, but are pre-drilled. The reason that they're pre-drilled is just like the real tank, a cotter pin is used to secure the tracks or the pins to the track links, keeping them all in one piece. Moving, getting our way to the pin, that the tracks, like I said, on this version of the Armortech tank are held in place with a small little washer and a miniature cotter pin. This is different from the early production Armortech Tigers in which they had a slip ring which crimped onto this end here of the track link or of the track pin, thus keeping it all in one place. The slip pins worked very well, however this design here is much more realistic and is also easier to put together than the slip rings were. The links simply get pinned together. You take the male and female end, plug them on. 
Now, if we notice, this end of the Tiger One Link has a small little divot. That is for the head portion of the track pin. Slide it in. And on this end here, we simply take our washer, slip it onto the track pin, and then with our miniature cotter pin, we simply thread it in place. Once the pin is threaded into the hole, we simply just push it all the way down. Once it is pushed all the way down, you can then clip the two little ends here with a small clipper and then we, with a plier, you then bend the two cutter pin halves around the track pin, keeping it in place. Now, I'm not going to do it to this unit here, as this is just done for demonstration. However, here's the actual track here, and we can see how the pins are bent around their pin or their track pin. With the addition of all these components, the model is now in runnable condition. The model has also been test driven, and we'll see what the test drive was like in this next coming scene. As you can see from the model's first test drive, the model performed very well and passed its road test. The model's road wheels and running gear seems to be in perfect alignment. There is no hiccups or slippage whatsoever with the way the track meshes with the road wheels as well as the sprocket. The model's track tension at this point also seems to be 
at its right amount. However, once the build progresses beyond this point with the addition of more machinery as well as details, the track attention might need to be adjusted slightly from, its, from the way you see it now. More information on that is to follow. And that concludes this project update video for this 1.6 scale Armor Tech late production radio control Tiger 1. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 scale tank builds as well as other 1.6 scale detail components. Thank you.